Namaste, beloveds. This is Motherhood Wisdom, also Tia Ma'at, also Valerie Ames. And I am doing this video because of some more revelations and just understanding um, what this 111111 gateway um, is all about. And I want to share that with you. Um, one of the things that I had been talking to prior with the Lion's Gate 888 um, gate opening was um, soul retrieval. And I was talking about how many... Soul retrieval is a Native American practice where the belief is that if someone is mean to you, if they yell at you, or if they hurt you, in any way, that that person is taking a little piece of your soul because they've diminished you. They, they've, they've made you feel small. And they, they broke off that little small piece and, or a bigger piece. And they, they've taken that to empower themselves or to, to keep for themselves um, something for like a trophy or something. Um, it's just the way bullies and, and other people, and you don't have to be a bully. Sometimes you can just be in a bad mood and responding to somebody. Everyone steals pieces of soul of others. Every time we have a bad thought or we have a, I wish you would shut up or you need to sit down or you ugly, or you stupid, or you don't even have to say it to that person. You're, you're sending out those little darts, those little arrows. And whether that person is conscious of what they're walking into or not, they receive all of that. And, beloveds, it's... We have to... really go inwards and we have to really look and observe our own thoughts and our own actions. And we have to look at others and how we treat others, how we react to others, how we connect with others. And I can say for myself, I, I've, I've been the kind of empath I am, and I, I've just kept my distance. It's, it's just what it is. But I am also learning now that with the changes and with the shift that is, is happening, we are going to need each other. And those that have healing gifts and abilities are really... going to have to work on themselves, on knowing themselves fully. Because when you get ready to work with these people, you're going to have to be empty. They're not going to be able to, tr you should not be triggered by them. You should be healed enough in the work, on working on yourself, where another does not trigger you. But you're able to help. You're able to empathize, you're able to sympathize, you're able to counsel, and you're able to heal, and you're able to help them open up their minds and their hearts and being able to see things from a different perspective other than what they've been programmed with. It's an adjustment. And... Beloveds, those of us who are a little bit more, I'll say, prepared and advanced and have been doing this for a while, we are starting to really have to go very deep and look at things from a whole new perspective. And I really mean a whole new perspective. Everything that has been, it's like, okay, that, that, that 
I don't want to say episode, that that saga, that chapter, or that book even is done. You know, is is done. That's been written. It's done. It's been published. And now we want the next one. Now we want the next chapter. We want the next series, the next part. You know, what is what is going to happen? And me, myself, and I, I am looking at who am I going forward? You know, what, with all of these things that are being left behind, what is left to go forward? Who is left to go forward? You know, and, and getting to know um, this energy that is present now, because this energy is unlike any energy that has ever, ever been in this lifetime. Or I did not fully recognize it or know it or acknowledge it or whatever. Whatever that framework is, I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried and concerned about, and worried is the wrong word, because I'm not worried. I'm more... in tune with the shift and I'm understanding the things that are coming and the things that have to change. They're they're really presenting themselves and making themselves known. I'll put it that way. Um, again, getting back to soul retrieval. Soul retrieval is a Native American perspective that Someone can take little pieces, small pieces of your soul, like puzzle pieces. And you are not your whole self because those parts were taken from you. Your inner child will remain your inner child because it did not heal those parts that were taken or it did not reconcile with those parts didn't have an ending, didn't have a understanding with them before they were removed. And what I'm getting, beloveds, is that I've had a soul retrieval done, and it was amazing. And I received so much from it. Um, but what happened lately is I did not know that I had some of my mother's soul parts inside of me. And that is what I was, I have been holding on to. You know, that is what I have been trying to reconcile and process and, and work out and, and deal with. And, now I have the understanding that that's not yours to 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 deal with. That's your, your mother's. And you need to give her her soul pieces back. You need to send them on. You need to release them. And when you release them, this will release some of your burden and some of the grief and misery that you've been carrying and it's not yours. But you took it. You stole it. You 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 stole them from her. When you, in your your way of getting back or talking back or or whatever, you took parts of her soul as well as she took parts of yours. Just as you took parts of your daughter's soul. Just as you've taken parts of your son's soul. And you have to release them back to them. You pray and you give them back. You say what you want to do. You speak your intention. I wish to return whatever this is from my children. When I yelled at them. When I beat them. When I cussed at them. When I hurt their feelings. I want them to be empowered with whatever it was that I took from them. I want to give it back. And I want it to fit 
And I wanted to empower them in a way that they know themselves better. And that they recognize that when they are not mindful with their own words and their own actions and their own thoughts, they are capable of soul theft. Soul theft is what mama wants us to work on. Soul theft, soul retrieval, soul release. That's why the psycho pump came. That's why we got the message when the veil was um, thinner that these entities would be coming through. And a lot of these entities are coming through for the healing to happen and for them to be psychopomped or returned back to a better place or plane. And a lot of them are coming to re retrieve um, what was taken from them. So make peace with the dead, beloveds. Give back what you took. Apologize. Give it back. Make your intentions clear of how you want to proceed, of what you want to do. Pray and ask your ancestors to help you, to guide you. And instead of stealing soul pieces, ask them if you can be aware of when you are searching for something outside of yourself to fill yourself with. Let a let an alarm go off. Let a, let some kind of consciousness happen within you, some kind of sign or signal happen to alert you to what you're doing. So you can work on that. And the more cognizant you are of that, the better. Also, um, beloveds, like I said, this 11-11-11 this time period, this gateway, is so prophetic and so beneficial to Gaia right now and to everyone on Gaia. This is a reconnection. This is a reunion of energies, of soul energies. This is a beautiful thing that is happening. I can't even put it into words. It's so beautiful. And we are the ones who are giving birth to it and anchoring it here with our will, from our soul, what we want, what we desire. Our highest you know, good for everyone. And we're starting to look at others. And we're starting to see them, whether we want to or not. We're starting to look at women and see them. Not as walking vaginas and breasts, but as actual human beings, as mothers, as daughters, as sisters as little girls, as innocents. And we see how beautiful that is and how rare it is today because of the things that have, we have allowed. We have got to get as far away from the narcissistic frequency and vibration as we can because that is what is weakening our spirits. And that is what is killing, giving our soul disease. And that's what's giving Gaia cancer our greed, our lust, 
our need to compete and, and compare and, and be king of the hill. These things were decided long ago. They need to be honored because the decisions were made in a just way and in a balanced way from infinite intelligence. And we are lingering between the duality and the God self, recognizing the God self within. And when we are able to do that, things will be so much easier. They will be so much easier than they are now. But it's going to take time because there's so many of us and we have to work through this. And the more that we work through our own stuff, the easier it gets and the more wisdom you pick up along the way. The journey only gets better. It does not get worse. It gets easier. And the more you are able to be triggered and deal with your with your shit, the healthier your soul and spirit get. The greater you shine, the higher you vibrate. The better you're able to manifest, the better you're able to attract. Because you are aligned. And, beloveds, being aligned is so, so very important. And I'm going to tell you how I've been experiencing things lately and in trying to find the balance of just where my energy would serve best. I'm understanding that this is fluid. And right now it is about our will. And our will is going to determine the the outcome of things because everything is, is in this flux right now. And whatever you draw to you, that's going to bring its own essence and energy and momentum with you, with yours. And so you're going to be off balance a little bit until you learn how to go with that flow. You know, be in that flow. It's... The way it was shown to me is it's very it's very interesting because what I've been getting is there is no right or wrong. Whatever way you choose, you're going to give birth to what you have inside of you. It is not about a right or a wrong person. Because either way that goes. You are going to learn lessons. You're going to adapt. You're going to modify yourself. You're going to modify and change that person. So in order to choose or make the decision, you have to see what is more compatible with your natural rhythm. We all have a natural rhythm. It's it's not something we pretend, it's not something we fake, it's not, it's, this is our natural self. This is, I'm a natural goofy person. When I'm not being goofy, it's because I'm making myself not be goofy. I'm naturally goofy. I, I, I just am, and I know that about myself, and I don't care. Um, and so I have to be with somebody who can who can understand Valerie is a goofball. You know, yes, she's she's very intelligent and she's very spiritual and she's very this and she's very that or whatever. But Valerie, when it comes all down to it, Valerie is a goofball, okay? 
She is a straight up goofball. And I'm good with that. You know, I like being a goofball. It it people underestimate you all the time because they expect you to be this or they expect you to be that or they assume you're this or they assume you're that. And out of all that assumption, they never take the time to really get to know you. Because they 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 know everything in their head, you know. And and they judge you from the things that you write, from the way that you go off on somebody else or the way you dress or or the things that you wear or your makeup or whatever, you know. And those are things. Things. I'm me. Without these things, I'm me. And what I'm understanding is A lot of people need these things to identify them to themselves because they don't know who they are inside. And they think that these things, these outside things, is what makes them attractive, what makes them pop, what makes them... Noteworthy to others. <laughs> Not gonna say that. Um, we have got the time to take the time to go within ourselves and do the work. We need rebirthing. We need it. There is no other way um, outside of this 3D system other than a rebirthing process. And with that, that means you have to let the old programming die. You have to release it. And only you know what that is. And only you know how much of that you can release. And how long that's going to take you. And just like I said, some of the things that I'm finding out now is I've let go of all my stuff and I didn't know I had other people's stuff (laughs) that I've been holding on, that I've snatched from their little souls with my viper tongue, my acid dripping. and, 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 And so I'm looking at this stuff and this this essence energy that is present, but is not mine. And I am knowing that I have to give it back, that I have to send this energy back and that I send it back with love. Um, Because that's the way I want to get my pieces back. And it's not a, well, I got to do this to get mine back like this. No, it's this is from your heart. You want healing to take place for them. The pieces that the piece, the soul parts that I stole, that I snatched, that I cut and took. I did it in self-defense, or I did it because I was pissed the fuck off. Or I did it because I, I couldn't take no more. I'm a very patient person, but my patience has a limit. And when I feel like, okay, um, I done been your doormat long enough, let me let me let me holler at you. You know, I, I've been nice. I've I've been as nice as I'm gonna be. Cause you didn't went overboard with it. You didn't took my kindness for a weakness. So now I gotta let you know. And you snatch pieces of their soul when you let them know. When you cuss them out, when you belittle them, when you let them know. You take parts of their soul. And they're so used to that kind of behavior. And me, myself, are so used to that kind of behavior 
you you wrap yourself up in that little fetal, you know, position and, and you just, damn, what is this, you know? And like I said, you have to realize, Valerie, just like you went and gathered your parts, you walking around with people's parts that you have taken from them. And that's why these people have these attitudes and stuff with you. You're not aware of it because your different parts will come up and snatch shit. And, and that le you empty yourself of that. And that person mad at you and you like, what the hell I do to you? <laughs> what? You know, and then it has to, okay. Mm. And then you try to, you know, me, I try to make the excuses. Well, if that part took it, you must have did something to that part. And, and that part, hey, she had, she had to get you. She had to do what she had to do. You know, but mama is saying in the fifth dimension, you, you can't go in there with your missing parts and you can't go in there with somebody else's parts that you did collected like little trophies and didn't even realize you were collecting like little trophies. But there is a part of you that is tee -hee 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 knows. And it's that part that you have to exercise. It is that part that you have to calm down and say, look, baby, I love you. You served your purpose in this 3D, 4D, but you, I can't take you to the, five, to the fifth dimension. I can't take you past this point. You cannot go past this point because you're still too angry. You're still too needy. You're still too vengeful. You're still too numb. You're still too disconnected. You're still in the mode to blame. And we have realized that we don't have to do any of that. We don't, that's not ours to carry. You know, we weren't designed for that purpose. That's not my purpose. That would be very mean of mama. To say, okay, Valerie, I'm going to make you. And I'm going to make you to carry all this shit. You can carry it. But it's going to hurt like hell. And you're going to be miserable. And la, 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 la. But you can carry it. No. That's, no. That's not the way that message goes. That message is you have free will. And you need to work through things and let them go. And, and know who you are and know that you attract these things to you. So it's not mama sending them your way. It's you calling them to you. Because you need to grow. Because you're curious. Because you want to understand my whole bad boy period, um, I just learned this, was me wanting to experience that, 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 that kind of love, that kind of, because that's what I had read in the romance books and, and, you know, the ones that I had watched growing up, that was just, ooh, you know, that was just juicy to me. It was just yummy. And I realize, you know, now that I am 53 years old, that I don't want a bad boy. It's, it's not about a bad boy. It's, it's not about that street. It's not about that hood. It's, it's all about being a gentleman. It's all about being stable. And it's all about understanding a woman, understanding a woman, knowing that you came from a woman. And that when you die, you go back to a woman because Gaia is a woman.
you came from a womb and you go back, your tomb is also, you know, a woman's body. And you need to respect that. And women need to respect that we need you to seed us. We need you. We need your hormonal releases. We need your energies. We need the exchange of the masculine and the feminine. That has to be fluid within us. That is what a relationship is. That's what that boat sails on. Those are the waters, the spiritual waters of your connection. And the waters are only rough when the two of you are going around stealing each other's soul, pieces of each other's soul, instead of supporting each other, instead of growing with each other, instead of exploring each other, instead of establishing a deeper connection with someone, with your partner. That takes time, that takes focus. And that takes a willingness to to let somebody in, you know? And if you want somebody to let you in, you've got to be able to let them in as well. And so it is a, it is a process. And... It's all about trust. And, you know, who living hasn't had their trust betrayed in some form or fashion? Whether you were an infant and your mama didn't give you the booby or feed you when you wanted to or you was wet and you had to wait. That's all still there. That all has to do with your patience now, and your temper now, and your temperament now. And so it's really about being real with each other and letting that person know, male or female, you know, it's not about heterosexual or, or... homosexual or any, it's not about, it's not even about gender. It's about your heart. Your heart is a muscle. That muscle, big as its fist, is your first organ. It holds the key to who you are. And when you can be still enough to get in contact with your own heart beat, that's peace. That's how you find peace. No matter where you touch your body, you should you should be aware of your heartbeat. You should feel your heartbeat in the bottom of your soles, of your feet. You should feel your heartbeat in your hand. You should be able to go like this and feel it in your fingers. You should, not just at the points where it is, where you know it is, But feel it from the inside. Tap into it, to that rhythm, to that frequency. And you are able to tap into the rhythm and the frequency of the earth and of the stars and of the universe. And the more you're able to integrate the knowing 
and the owning and the sowing and the being and the becoming one with the wisdom that is in that heart. Baby, baby. That's balance. That's how you find your balance. With your heartbeat. And measure a person by the way they make you feel. Not so much the things that they say, because talk is cheap. <laughs> talk is real cheap. But how someone makes you feel, when you are in tune with yourself, because when you're not in tune with yourself or you're not fully there yet, people can fool you. And I don't care how good you are or how instinctual or intuitive you are. Some people have the ability to cloak themselves, to hide that darkness, to hide that vibration to hide that energy. So be mindful. Be mindful of who you interact with and what they want. And that is what builds trust. But I'm here to tell you, some of these people in these 3D worlds, they just want to build trust so they can tear you down even further. So it's, it's hard to know sometimes how to proceed. And beloveds, when you get into that space or that, that, that frame of mind, that's when you go to your ancestors. That's when you start praying. That's when you start looking at the card, the tarot cards. That's when you start getting into divination. That's when you start being more on the numbers that you see, the signs, the synchronicity, all of that. Um, 3801, the piece, the pieces that I got back from my mother, were times where we had, I was older, because as a child I never, I never dared <laughs> talk back. I might didn't say nothing, but I definitely wouldn't go talk back. Mm -mm. But as I got older into my teens and as I had seen her behaviors and, and just some things that she was doing and how she was treating my father, I couldn't be quiet. And there were times when I let her let her have it. And like I said, I have a very acid tongue when it comes down to it. And, you know, I let her have it. My father, she had put my father in a nursing home and she was dating. And she was bringing these, this man home, you know, and he wanted to buy me and my brother McDonald's and toys and this and this and that. And I'm looking at her like, and I'm looking at him like, you ain't my daddy. You ain't got nothing to say to me. I don't want your McDonald's. I don't want nothing you got. Matter of fact, this is my daddy house. My daddy checks pay for this rent. And I looked at her and I let her know, what kind of woman is you? And my mama told me she broke down and she cried. 
And she said, you may not understand one right now, baby. You, you ain't going to understand right now. Ain't nothing I can do to tell you that's going to make you understand. But one day, when you a woman, and you didn't had kids of your own, and you didn't been in relationships with men, you'll understand the needs that a woman has. So I ain't going to even try. Because there ain't nothing I can say. So it is what it is. And you just going to have to deal with it. Because I'm a grown ass woman. And I'm your mama. And you don't tell me. I had you. You didn't have me. Fair enough. But I let you know how I felt. And. I never did realize. That. During periods and times like that. I took pieces of her just like she was taking pieces of me. And a lot of things have been surfacing. Like when my mother um, passed, she had a stroke and she lost her voice and couldn't talk afterwards. But she wrote and she let me know she was tired. And when she said that, I knew she was tired of living. Not that her body was tired, that her soul and spirit had had enough. And that was her way of saying, I love you, but I can't take this no more. It's too painful. I can't deal with it no more. And I didn't know how much resentment I had. 42.22. Let me get some light. Okay. I just need to turn on the light for a little bit. Um, just to make it a little bit brighter in here. Um, let's see. 42, 41, 42, 42 now. Um, soul pieces and stealing them and, and, and everything. I didn't know, you know, with my mom, how much I had taken from her, how much I had cut her, how much I had hurt her. I never put myself in her shoes before. I never saw things from her perspective before. I only saw them with my eyes as a child and with the knowledge that I had and what she was doing was wrong. I did not see that my mother was 20 years younger than my father. So my father was in like 63, and so my mother was in her 40s when she brought this man home. You understand it different. When you have all the information and you can look at it from a different way, you realize my mama had needs. Okay. You realize that my mama had needs. They were not being met. My mother was by herself with me and my brother went to school. She was taking care of my father all alone. My mother had was bipolar, manic depressive. So she had never had to carry everything the way she was carrying. It. 
And I was evil. I was evil because that was my daddy. And I couldn't see it no other way. You know, I, I couldn't couldn't see it any other way other than what she was doing and, and, and knowing how she had did me and, and what she was doing now was just whoo. You know, that was ugh. and you talking about resentment and baby when an empath tells you they holding resentment over something, believe you me. That has the strength of poltergeist shit when you don't control it. It has the ability to poison your soul. That resentment can take you over. It can take your heart over. It can stop you from being who you used to be or who you're supposed to be or who you know you are because you get so lost in the pain and so stuck because it doesn't make sense to you. And sometimes things, like I said, it's not about intelligence. It's about it being the right time in the alignment, in your spiritual evolution and maturity for you to receive certain revelations. This has always been it's common sense, but it was never turned on because there was always my view of it and my view was law. My view was the right. Hers was wrong. So I ain't want to hear none of that. You can't say shit to me. Because this is what you're doing. There is no excuse. In my little 12-year-old mind, 12, 13, 14-year-old mind, there was no excuse for what you're doing to my father. I have to go visit my father and see him and he's sitting in his piss or his shit. And you up here with this man in my face talking about some, let me buy you this and let me buy you that. You're so pretty. Don't be so mean. Smile. Bitch, please. <laughs> Woo. Like I said, and then I had to understand, you know, as these revelations are coming, some of my attitude with men stems from this. And, and I have to I'm learning to release what I need to release because I no longer need to hold on to that. I no longer need to hold on to the pain that that child endured because of her mama and this man and what she thought her father was enduring. My father's body was still here, but his soul and his mind and his spirit was not. That was a shell. That's his shell. That's not my father. That's his shell. But when you don't have that information and you don't have that knowledge, mm, that was that was harder than the rape. That was harder than the molestation. That was harder than what I went through with my first love, so to speak. Um, and I realized 
I broke down like a baby and I just boohooed letting this emotion go, you know, and, and telling my mom, I understand now and that I'm so sorry, you know, that I held that against you and that I <laughs> was just a bitch. And I understand why you beat me. <laughs> I understand. I do. I do. I do. I do. And I forgive you. As I forgive myself. And, you know, I have to ask my children to forgive me. Because... We carry behaviors over. When we yell at them, we, we say things that, I ain't going to never say that to my child. And you find yourself saying it. The same thing that cuts you to your heart. You find it coming out of your mouth. And you can't even snatch it back because it's out so fast. Give those soul parts back to your children. Let them know you're sorry. Let them know where you come from. Explain to them if they're old enough to understand. And even if they're not, just like my mama did with me, one day, baby, <laughs> you'll understand. And my daughter will tell you that, and my son too, there are times when I told them, oh, you ain't going to understand it right now. Mm -mm. You ain't going to get it right now. Ain't nothing I can tell you. Ain't no way I can put it to you where you'll understand it right now. You have to go through enough life experiences. You have to get old enough. Then you'll understand. It'll come to you. It'll be crystal clear. Bing! Just like that. Okay. Let's get some cards going here. And I'm going to start with the medicine woman deck. Let's see here. Just because. <laughs> Just because. Okay, mama. All right, mama. Uh, I ain't even shuffled, but okay. I'll, I'll take what you gave me because that was <laughs> that was weird, but okay. Um, what we got? We got two cards. We got the Apprentice of Bowls and we got the Apprentice of Stones. We'll begin with the Apprentice of Stones. This is the Apprentice of Stones. Okay, and this is about bounty and harvest and fall and I see all these good vegetables and green and hmm, okay. Apprentice of Stones. Apprentice of Stones is on page 159 which is 15, which is a 6, 159. There goes that 6. And this is a prayer of this card. I have heard the creatures of earth calling. I have heard the sounds of the wind and felt the sun. I have listened to the whisper of trees and seen colors wink and light my way. I am attuned to earth and heed her call. Now I can tell others. I can show the way to be quiet and tune in to what is being said across the planet as I walk. To the cries of the dying and the birthing joy of a new day to come. I am a herald of the dawn. I have prepared the earth for renewal. The great mother continues to guide my way. And this is the lesson of this card. A person of higher status will take you under their wing. You are being led to one who will be a teacher of greater values or broader concept 
broader conceptions in regard to your relationship with the material world. Hidden powers of your materials may reveal themselves to you. You will begin to see how your work relates to the world as a whole and to the great cycle of life. Spend as much time as you can just attuning to the earth elements that make up your resources. Look deeply at the original ideas underlying your work. See how the spirit flows through you and through what you do in the world. Hmm. Seek deeper resources of wisdom in regard to your craft. Life is an art, and your partner in this project is Earth. How can you make your business together something that produces resources for future generations? Wow. Woo, that has some energy on it right there. Hmm. Okay, I will, uh, okay. Seek deeper, I must repeat this, beloveds. Seek deeper sources of wisdom in regard to your craft. Life is an art and your partner in this project is Earth. How can you make your business together something that produces resources for future generations? You are being asked to grow and expand to see that as you work, the Earth works through you. That's that card, beloved. Wow, that was powerful. And now we have the Apprentice of Bowls. Two fourteen, and the apprentice is like the page in the other decks or the knights, whatever you want to call them. Apprentice, um, bowls. Apprentice of bowls is two fourteen, which is a seven. Hmm. Here we go with them sevens. 213. Not 213. 214. <laughs> Apprentice of Bulls. A devotion. I didn't show the picture. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, you can't see it, but it is so pretty. Okay. This is what it says. This is a prayer. If I am sick, you heal me. If I am lonely, you send me a friend. If I need to grow, you challenge me. If I am tired, you grant me rest. Great Spirit, I trust in you. I see now that I too can be a messenger of hope for others. I can tell them what I have learned and how you have helped me. I will bring your love to the bodies, minds, and hearts of those who need you. I will be a comforter. Your spiritual messages, messengers, will be my guides. Lesson. All of your time is devoted to love. It does not matter what you are loving. For you have surrounded yourself with things of value and meaning. You appreciate your relationships and spend time improving your ability to communicate the love you feel for each person in your life. Oh. You are learning to be completely immersed in your high self. Prayers flow as naturally as random thoughts once did. You have formed a personal relationship with an aspect of divinity, perhaps a guide with inner planes, a saint or a guru in the outer world. At the least, you have someone within whom you see God and whom you like to emulate. Your intuition is strong and you want to use it. Go ahead. You are an apprentice and this is a learning stage. You learn by doing and reviewing. You would not be this far if you had not developed qualities in yourself that you can trust. There is quite a bit of magic in your life now. Use it always for the greater good. Power is at your command and you are entrusted by your spiritual progress thus far to use it wisely. Your goal is God realization, not success 
in worldly terms. And that was those two cards. And I am going to do the Abraham Hicks deck now and we're going to get three. I'm pulling another one because one of them was stuck together. Okay, there we go. And this is what we have. The first one was number six. My most important relationship is with my source. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Okay, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it is what it is. So, my most important relationship is with my source. There is no relationship of greater importance to achieve than the relationship between you and your physical body right here and now, and the soul source, God, from which you have come. If you tend to that relationship first and foremost, you will then and only then have the stable footing to proceed into other relationships. <laughs> yes, mama. <laughs> your relationships with your own body, with money, with your parents, children, grandchildren, and your world will all fall easily into alignment once you tend to this fundamental relationship first. Gotcha, mama. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, the next one is 17, which is an 8. And I don't know if you can see the little white bird over there. But there's a black one and there's a white one. They are opposite sides of the tree. By default, I would have attracted unwanted relationships. Many of the relationships or experiences you have attracted, you would not have deliberately attracted if you had been doing it on purpose. But much of your attention is not done by deliberate intent, but rather by default. It is important to understand that you get what you think about, whether you want it or not. And chronic thoughts about unwanted things Invite or ask for matching experiences. The law of attraction make it so. Keep working on that, beloveds. We are so programmed um, with our way of thinking about things, our way of attracting things um, to us. And the more we remind ourselves about the law of attraction, the better chances we have of reprogramming ourselves. And so when you find yourself going through the motions of, of those negative thoughts or, or bringing that, magnetizing that, try to stop yourself. And even if it, you've already done it, take it back if you can take it back. Or just apologize, send your apology out there to it negate it, you know, take the sting out of it, take whatever you can, because sometimes we are very reactionary. And if we are used to responding in certain ways, it, it's, it's hard to step out of that. When you're used to defending yourself one way, and you've been given a whole nother way to do it now. Only you're so used to the old ways that you forget 
you have new abilities now. You have a way that you don't even have to get physical if you don't want to. You don't even have to say something. All you have to do is think it. And like the other first card said, with these gifts of power and gifts comes great responsibility. And you have to understand who has carried these gifts before you and who and how they were. And then you have to uphold those moral values within yourself. And that is how you anchor that energy or that frequency of those gifts and have them develop even deeper. And like I said, sometimes you have been given something new and you're so used to using something old that that's just your go-to. But you really have to begin to let that part of you go because there's there's no moving forward for that part has matured has evolved as far as it can and so you need to let that part go and don't be afraid of change and embrace it look for it and design the kind of change that you want think about it see it in your mind's eye what what you want, where you want to be, you know, how you want the world to be. Okay. The next one is number 11. I have control over the vibration I offer. It says, once you begin to believe or expect good feeling things to come, you're in the vortex. And once you get in there, now you are a cooperative component. Now you get to rendezvous with all of the good stuff that you have put there. And you can train yourself there. You can do it in a day. You have control of everything that rendezvous with you. When you get control of the vibration that you offer, and you get control of the vibration that you offer, when you care about how you feel. powerful. You get control when you care about how you feel. What do you see taking place in America right now? Americans are caring about how we feel, about our own identity as beings, and how we identify others. So this card is very, very powerful. The next card is 47. Um, I'll try to show it. There we go. <laughs> and it says, if I'll envision the behavior I desire to inspire. Wow. Peace is what I see. If we were a parent or anyone waiting to inspire positive behavior from another, we would do our personal vibrational work first. We would align with our source energy by envisioning the outcome we seek and by holding those involved as positive objects of our attention. We would not allow any current unwanted behavior to be the reason for our attention to them. Wow. So, what you want to attract Give it positive attention. Do not focus on the negative aspects or elements of um, of things that come at you that way. Um, okay, we'll do one more. We'll do Isis Oracle. I, you know I got to do my Isis Oracle. And that one's a little bit longer, but... Excuse me. Portal of light. Portal of light. She glides on wings through time and space. She got the hand out like, come out. Come, baby, come.
Come on. All right. Let's see. Portal of Light. Hundred and twenty one, which is a four. Here we go. She glides on wings through time and space. It is only this physical reality that is bound by time and space. You are a being conscious on levels beyond the physical world. You are guided to work with your healing powers beyond the confines of time and space and to allow your sense of self to expand. It is safe for you to do this now. You will not become ungrounded through such spiritual growth. You are not leaving your earthly awareness. You are instead adding to it. And, beloveds, that's the key that so many of us need. That is the permission that so many of us have subconsciously been been waiting for been been waiting for this you know that what you're doing is not leaving your earthly awareness but you're adding to it so when i said all of these things you have to release them as you release them you are sending them, you are emptying yourself and you're being added to. You're not being subtracted from. You're not losing parts of yourself. You're going to gain from letting go. You're going to be rewarded for letting go, for releasing old negative things that no longer serve you. So, you are growing in power and awareness. You have had breakthrough insights where you realize that you are not who you thought you were. You are, in fact, a much vaster being. Sometimes this was shocking and uncomfortable and difficult to accept. <laughs> mm. Mm. I'm not even going to go there. At other times, it was gentle and made much sense to you. You are learning to integrate this awareness of your vast self into your life. The practical consequences of doing so are extraordinary. To live with less and less fear and insecurity, to become more detached and more passionate, more loving and less demanding, to need less and receive more, to feel more joy and exert less force to attain it. Such wonderful gifts await you. You also become capable of exerting healing influence beyond time and space, which means being able to help free yourself and others. If you choose to share your healing gifts, you can learn to create freedom from trauma, attachment, history, or any other situation that may drain life force and distract from divine love. Do you hear what's going on, beloveds? With everything that's going on right now, it is draining our life force. We're worried. We're creating more disease. We're giving in to more addictions. We're in fear. And that is draining our life force. And it's distracting us from unconditional divine love which infinite intelligence has given to us. We have to seek it. No matter whether occurring in this or any other lifetime, Isis guides you to powers and abilities to heal that are beyond time and space. It starts with the realizations that what has happened in the past has power over you only to the extent that you allow it. The portal of light is being opened to you now to travel through time and space to release the past, to open up to a future bright, and to call for more power in the present moment. Once you have done this for yourself, if you are guided into the healing path, then you can share this with others. Be guided by the loving blessing of Isis. 
to assist you in the sacred interdimensional travel now for healing and understanding, more growth and peace. If you have also drawn the oracle of the Merkaba, then part of your particular soul gift is an ability to navigate between spiritual dimensions of reality, shifting from lower vibrations of fear and bringing through higher vibrations of love to allow for peace and release. The combination of the Merkaba and the Portal of Light card means you have the ability not only navigate dimensions, but to bring higher dimensional awareness into the present moment for healing with a natural soul ability to be present in lower vibrational realities. Ashe, 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 Aho, Amun, Asan. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Such of those of fear and competition on earth at present and simultaneously being anchored in higher vibrational soul realities of love, peace, and truth. This makes you a powerful source of light. And the Lady Isis and her beloved star Sirius offer you divine peace and protection now to help you in this sacred task of being a star of divine light and presence on the earth at this time. The Oracle of the Portal of Life also brings special guidance that a phase of time or experience is over and a new cycle at a higher vibrational turn of the spiral is beginning. So prepare to ascend. Expect things to become lighter, freer, and faster moving in your life, even perhaps while you appear to be more surrendered and more peaceful within yourself. And this is the ritual. You will need one candle, perhaps a tea light, 11710. Perhaps a tea light or a black or white candle for this exercise and some matches. Sit comfortably where you can gaze at the lit candle with eyes half closed and your spine relatively straight and supported. Gaze at the candle flickering with soft focus and keep your eyes half closed, half open as you focus on the candle and your breath. When you are ready, imagine you can project yourself into the candlelight, sending your awareness into it until you sense all around you, either actually or with intention, bright white light, pure. Allow yourself to release anything at all, conscious or unconscious, that you feel weighs you down. Just release it into the light and say quietly the incantation. In this light beyond time and space, I enter the portal of divine light and grace. I am free of shackles from this life or another. I surrender all fear to the divine mother. I now choose to be free of the past. In the present light of spirit, I now bask. In the portal of light beyond all time, love and light frees me into peace sublime. And when you are ready, just open your eyes and extinguish the candle. And, beloveds, the incantation repeats. Um... And I'm, I'm going to let it rest there simply because I don't want the, um, the time to run out <laughs> on my, my um, computer is. <sighs> okay. <laughs> um, that's going to kind of do it, beloved. And I want to... Um, thank you for listening, and I hope that what I have been going through and what I'm sharing transparently with you helps you um, look deeper within yourself. And again, beloveds, um, universalwomb.com, universalwombwisdom.com is where I will be starting classes in January um, for the medicine woman, starting the journey for the medicine woman. And you can sign up there. 
Um, again, that's universalwomb.com, universalwombwisdom.com. Um, that's my website. Also, I have a page um, with the same name, Mother Wit, Woman Wisdom, on Facebook. And I'll be sharing some things there. I just have to get more organized. Um, I'm learning how to do this stuff. It's not learning how to do it. I've worked in places where I've had to before. It's just that I've been out of the workforce for a while now, and I've got to get myself back um, organized and on schedules and that kind of thing so that I can flow naturally from it without just being butterfly. No, no, no. Woo! Pretty! <laughs> so, um, Mama has some things that I am supposed to be doing. So, I've got to get myself together. And it's going to require me getting myself organized. And I am a procrastinator. So, that is me kicking and screaming, but that's part of what has to go because that no longer serves. So <clears throat> even in acknowledging that is starting to release it because when it comes up now and I tell myself, oh, Valerie, you can do it later. You, you know, I said, you're procrastinating. You need to do it now. You need to move. You need to do this. You need to do that. You know, and, and so it's getting there. It's, it's coming along. It's coming along. It's coming along. It's coming along. But I am not rushing it because this is a process. And this is going to have to be in place for the rest of my life. So it has to be crafted and created in a way that serves me, regardless of, you know, <clears throat> how somebody else may see it. If they want to know what's going on, all they have to do is ask, and I can break it down to them spiritually. So with saying that, um, I am going to... Um, close this down now. And again, I want to say thank you so much for everything. And again, beloveds, learn to release what you need to release. And if you've taken parts from others, even if it's been on a defensive, release those parts back to that person. Release them back, not for them, for you, so that you're no longer carrying them and you're no longer corded to that. Because if you're carrying them around, then they are interwoven inside of you and you have to unravel them and, and, and throw them away. And you may have to do it a couple of times if it's really courted. Um, but some things, beloveds, just know that as we are maturing, we are coming to understand things a lot differently. And that is due to what is happening with the alignments that are taking place as above, so below. So everything is in divine order. You do not need to worry. All you need to do is work on yourself. Everything is going to work out. Work on yourself. Work on yourself. And like I said, it can be a gentle transition and, and turnover of power. 
does not have to be bloody. It does not have to be gory. It does not have to end up in wars. It does not have to end up in nuclear explosions. It does not have to go into diseases and all of this, the plague kind of scenarios. It doesn't have to go there. We're intelligent enough that it does not have to go there. And those ones that we have put in charge, it's time for us to hold their hands if they need to, if we need to, you know, or or go audit their office or go, go see what they do during the days. You know, what are you doing about this? Call in. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? This is not about them and their paycheck. This is about your community. This is about your family. This is about the earth itself. This is about humanity, human rights. This is about women being equal. This is about black people. being seen as noble and being given the dignity that they deserve. That they have earned throughout their history. That was stolen and changed. So the blood and soil could prevail. And look where it sprung us. We're on the brink of an apocalypse. You see what needs to be changed. You have the power to change it. One grain of rice can tip the scale, baby. You are way more than one grain of rice. Your voice matters. Your energy matters. Your thoughts matter to the collective and to you, your highest self needs that communication with you. So explore, think freely, be open-minded, learn to trust your instincts, learn to be able to get in touch with them. A lot of people may feel that they aren't instinctual, you are. You just have to train yourself to be more instinctual. You you were just weren't taught to look at the details of things and you just need to be taught how to feel the details, how to feel the parameters and just to go places within yourself and, and see what you feel as if you were a blind person that could not see what do you feel about this place. What do you feel about this person? What do you feel about this energy? What do you hear? What do you see with your third eye? What does it say to you? What does it feel like? Okay. That's going to do it, beloveds. Um, again, thank you. Namaste. Dang it.